Well, it's a lovely sunny day today in Melbourne with the sun shining and I feel greatly for my neighbours in Sydney who have been going through these tremendous floods and of course my friends in, in Brisbane who, have, who were hit last week. And I hope you all like my, uh, my tie because I think it's very topical at the moment. The index was down 4.3% uh, in March and it's now down to 96.6, which is the lowest, measure, lowest number we've seen since September 2020. Obviously, there have been a wide range of factors are behind that. For instance, uh, the confidence in Brisbane, and the survey was conducted last week, was down 11.3%, whereas in Melbourne it was only down by 3.2%. Inflation has been a big factor. Uh, a year ago, about 6% of people registered any, any relevance to inflation. In the survey this week, it was more than 40%. And 80, and, and nearly 80% of people were negative on the inflation story. We also saw that on the overall economy, 43% a year ago were, were registering interest in the economy. Now it's 77% and we've seen a very large minus 77% of disapproving of the state of the economy at the moment. The interest rate story continues to be worrying. Two thirds of our respondents are expecting to see interest rates rising over the next 12 months. Story about the unemployment rate once again was strong. People are very optimistic about their labour market condition at the moment and, and about the fact that the unemployment rate is going to remain low. But we're starting to see real concern with regard to the housing market. The time to buy a dwelling is, was down by 7.7% in this survey and it's now down by more than 40% since the peak in, in November 2020. But most interestingly, we saw a 10.3% fall in how people see the outlook for house prices. The index is still above 100 at 136, so more people still expect prices, prices to be rising. But um, the fall that we've seen today could be a signal that the confidence is really starting to unravel in terms of both house prices and affordability. We're still optimistic about the strength of the, uh, the Australian economy this year. We're expecting growth of 5.5%, strongly underpinned by an 8% lift in consumer spending. And one of the key factors there is going to be the ongoing strength of the household balance sheet. The savings rate is currently 13.6%. In the final quarter of last year, it came down from over 19% to 13%. And that was what drove consumer spending providing around $20 billion of spending capacity. Now we're expecting over the course of 2022 that the savings rate's going to come down to about the normal of about 6%. So that big fall, 13.6 down to 6, is also going to release a lot of spending capacity. And also bear in mind that the household sector's accumulated $270 billion in excess savings that's going to provide buffers to interest rate hikes and also provide some support for additional spending, although we think that most of that money will be, will be saved uh, given the uncertainties around the war and around inflation and around rising interest rates. 2023 is not going to be such a good year. We're only expecting growth then of 2.7% and the household savings rate that will start the year at 6% won't be able to fall too much to subsidise household spending. And in 2024, with house prices having fallen for about uh, almost more than a year, interest rates continuing to rise through 23 and into 24, we think that will be the, the, the slow spot for the economy with growth of only 2%. But that's all on the assumption that the Reserve Bank is able to contain these big inflation pressures. Because if they're not, and interest rates have to go a lot further than the 1.75% peak that we're looking at, uh, then we'll see a much weaker outcome for the economy in 2024. Thanks very much.